talk to you um, every day when I talk to literally hundreds of schools that every month. And um, if you like what you see here today, don't be too surprised because you basically designed them. Copley's real um, emphasis is on listening to you and design the tools and the functionality that you tell us that you want. Just a little background on the company before we get started. Um, we are a Mark Cuban company, and uh, the directive from Mr. Cuban is that everyone should graduate. I, a lot of people, um, but one that we do aspire to. When we first started, um, our main coffee square, if anyone is familiar with Boston, it's an area where people literally from all over the world come together and can sit and talk to the fountains, and at one end is the Boston Public Library. So with that motif, what we wanted to do was create a sense of community opportunities for engagement through a social networking platform. And that was our first foray, if you will, into student success. We developed a number of what we call proactive tools, proactive um, learning, proactive supplemental instruction that we had a lot of success with, primarily in low-income, first-gen community uh, schools. But what we found was that um, that wasn't enough um, because um, you had, say, a, a student in front of an advisor who could you know, maybe do a report and look at attendance and look at grades get somewhat of a picture of the student, but what that advisor didn't know was that they were 120 days late in the bursar's office, or they had missed the financial aid deadline. These are all factors and data points that we follow that will give us a better picture of the student's likelihood of success. So what we've done is created a um, reporting engine that essentially sits inside the Canvas environment. And we'll actually be um, today going back to what we do with PowerPoint and a uh, Canvas LMS. So you'll see the coffee tools working within that LMS. Okay, any questions before we get started? No? Okay, we're from South Florida, by the way, so um, we're still getting used to this, but when you put the cold water on, it doesn't come out really warm, it actually comes out cold. <laughs> so, you'll have to forgive me if I sound a little chilly. Well, welcome to the new learning architecture. And I think all of us know this is where we are right now. I was talking yesterday to uh, one of the campus folks, and you know, he was saying, well, what if then the uh, instructor for remedial work wants to send someone out to Khan Academy? We need to be able to connect to MOOCs. But the salad days, ladies and gentlemen, we think are over, where um, I need Facebook, I need that, so I'm gonna set up my account on Facebook and talk with my students there. I wanna do face-to-face -face at night, so I only have a site, right? We can keep going and going and going. But what have we done when we do that? We're kind of going off the reservation, right? We're, we're losing that safe platform where we're kind of promising everything we really should be. What else are we losing? We're losing our metrics. How much time are you on Skype? I don't know. You know what have you done on in your biology class on the Facebook page? I don't know. So Copley's approach right now is to actually come into the LMS, in this case Canvas, and that's what, in fact, you'll see today. So um, here it is. If I can show you here, you can see the traditional Canvas buttons here. But then as we come down, we start to see copy buttons. Right? And in this case, we hit Control Center. And at Control Center, obviously not accessible to the student, um, but we're going to go into advanced reports because we want to just jump right into it. So if I could, I'll switch over. Frequency too, every day, every week, you know, once a month, whatever frequency we, we want to have. 
and then we can enable what we call notifications or not. Because I think, as you listened to me talk earlier when I said we're looking at financial aid status, we're looking at advisory notes status, we're looking at bursar's office status, would you kind of agree with me that we're going to catch and identify a lot more students earlier in the college process? Show of hands, yes? Sure. Okay. The last thing Kotlin wants to do is bring you the problem. What is that problem? Well, Mr. Advisee, Mr. Advisee, here's 50 more names from the report. That's not going to work. Right? What are they going to do with this? Is anyone reading them? Is anyone reading them? So what Kotlin allows us to do, and actually, let me pull the data point down, and you can see, you'll be able to see how, how it works. It's my search here.
factors. So during our implementation process with you, what's the first thing we do? We sit down and go over, you know, these are the suggested data points, but maybe you have others. And you know, you may have proprietary systems that don't want to talk. That's okay, we can make that pathway to it so that that becomes a data point for you. So the data points that you need are here for you to make reports. How many of these can you can report at any given time? Up to 16 at a time. And you can weight them against each other too. You know, maybe one factor isn't as important as another, bring that weight down. Maybe another factor is more important, bring that weight up. And you can run the reports without notification with a single click. You can kind of do dry runs to see how those results are coming back, which is what we'll look at next, um, to fine tune it before it starts to run. And of course, anytime during the semester, you can go in and edit to change parameters, to change weights, to change your score. Let me pause at this point. Any questions at, at this point? Yes, um, so quickly, um, I'm interested in how you measure the stress and test on process. If somebody's been working on stuff like this, that's really a tough one to pin down. One, Candace only measures in like 15 minute increments. So it's really hard to get away from the seeing of the game. It's just you know, one or, you know, or under count it or over count. Correct. I mean, and that first you're speaking to waiting because it's how, how many times have we gone onto a, any platform or, or any website and we've left it open for six hours. We only look at it for 15 minutes, right? Right. So that's something that, you know, if you do choose it, you may want to bring the waiting down on it. I don't think that's an exact science yet. Yeah. Um, and um, we, in our meetup rooms, where we go face to face, you know, we have a, another data point for that, where we're also looking at are you engaging in any activity while you're in the room? Are you uploading documents? Are you going in and marking up the whiteboard? So we're kind of getting a little bit more of a sense when you're in our backyard. But you're right, anyone in any application can just open and walk away, and that was taken. Any other questions at this point? No? Okay. So let's say that we've, um, we've completed our report. And here's what a, um, a typical result would look like. So in this case, we've got three students identified. They were three notified, two prescribed. And here, showing you the data points and how they were set. Um, so that you know, what was it that I, what were my data points again? So they're right here for you. And then we can even drill down to an individual student from that list to look to see um, where, where they are. And uh, for those of us who like graphs, let me get this a little neater for you. So I can
then instructors don't even know whether or not the student actually watched the video and did they get the main points from it. So it's not just a question of intervening with these smartphone notifications to show a calendar that you can meet with a physical person, we can also push content and then test on that content to make sure that the student has complied. Another question? If you ask somebody to set up an appointment with a divider, how do you know that as a method now? Excellent question. We want to we want to kind of uh, close that loop, right? Okay. So um, I'm still in here. We have a section called notes because one of the other things we noticed was that schools were all over the place with notes. Admissions has notes over here. Advisors have notes over there. Some departments are writing on paper, others are using Excel sheets, right? Some are using people's phone. Right? So obviously we can API and we can coordinate with uh, people's software. But what happens is if a, if a notification is sent out that you need to make an appointment, in coffee notes, you're, you're going to have an entry here. Okay? And that entry is going to say whatever the message was, but it's also going to say have clicks or if they attended, they miss or they uh, reschedule. So the advisor can very easily just type the student's name in, their notes come up, they'll see that the appointment is scheduled, and then they can click to say that the appointment was kept or not, and they can click and add a comment to the meeting as well, as well as changing their status. And by the way, all of these advisor status are um, measured as well by the advanced reports. You know, we, we really feel that there aren't enough there are never too many data points to look at. It's really up to you, with your individual students, with the demographics you're measuring, to uh, pick the ones that are best suited for your school and for your student body. Just a, uh, a picture of all, all the different messaging. This is right now as a web app. It will launch uh, in early 2015 as a, um, as a smartphone. Usually other questions will will give you kind of a springboard and show some of the other features. So I'll open for questions now. Thank you. Thank you. So our um, principal, we want to keep a pulse on all of our students to have a system on our below mm -hmm. in any course overall. Right. So not just on that business plan. How would you favor for students to get a particular course? Well, I come here and I would pick for the uh, course grades, it would go and look at their all the courses they're in, and it would do a calculation to see where they are. You set what your thresholds are, and then it would give the report back to your principal. And we actually go one step further, because you know you hear every school says the same thing. Student success is priority one, correct? Every school says that. Okay. Copley has really internalized that, so that on this platform, when you originally hit control center, if you're the principal of the school, if you're the president of the college, it shows you this is how many students you have, this is how many intervention required, this is how many are at risk, and this is how many are on the path. If you're an advisor, it shows you this is how many advisees you have, and obviously the red, green, and yellow scat out as well. So every time you go on to this platform, it immediately tells you where you are. And by the way, the higher you go, the more you can drill down. So the president would literally drill down to an advisor and see the status of all of his or her students with two clicks. Yes? Uh, is this student data as well? I'm sorry? Is this student data as well? Is there anything that students can see as far as, okay, this is my advisor, I can then I can go ahead and change my appointment that. Absolutely. A student can go in and um, with either tutoring, with advisor, with instructor for office hours, and um, make an appointment because you can go in as an advisor, you can put your whole time there. We do it in 15 minute increments, and you know, we obviously encourage you to use the capability of the face to face rooms. So when you do schedule time, you can select I want the virtual meetup room or I want to be brick and mortar in person. And they see their progress before this, and then will they see that, oh, okay, I have been doing well? You know, that's going to depend on each school in terms of what permission levels you want to give. So could that be done? Yes, it, it, it definitely could. Valuable and really trying to give you the exact
exact type of reporting laws that you want, we offer both ways. Other questions? Sorry. How about in the other cases, at the higher education level, we're tracking three points that we're seeing for parents. Typically, as you're a peer, you're not only a peer, but you're one of the team in terms of graduation, right? Is it dynamic enough to say this person needs to be taking this class and this person needs to be taking this class? The, um, it's, it brings up a number of issues. The, the question is how dynamic is it? If I have someone on this major and someone on a different major, will it tell me where they are in terms of path? Um, it doesn't tell path length, but what it does do is check into the campus database to see what classes is this particular student taking in order to calculate where they are versus, in, in terms of scoring, um, versus this student in, in taking completely different courses. So it is able for an advisor, which is really where that would come into play, to, you know, if the advisor has um, students from different disciplines, um, the, the report can still take that into account. Other questions? Do you like it? Okay, as I said at the beginning, you should, because you designed it. You know, we've, we've literally worked with thousands of schools and um, listened, and these were some of the, um, some of the wish lists that came up was, yeah, I wish I could get a more complete picture of my students. And, um, you know, we think that this gives that more complete picture. One other tool I didn't go into over here is called Pulse. And what Pulse does is uh, allows you to take either your entire student body or a segment and send them a question on the phone. And the question could be something like, are you ready for midterms? Or the instructor could send, you know, are you ready for you know, the test next week? And you have answers from negative to neutral to positive. And if a negative answer comes back, answer them right away with that, again, math tutor's calendar um, or an office hour for the instructor so that you're able to be in touch with your students. And these questions can be loaded at the beginning of the semester. You know, it can be everything from how's, how is class going to um, you know, are you ready for midterms. And, and what that harkens back to, and a lot of what we do in our proactive practices, but which we're not really here to talk about today, is to take proven analog practices and put them into the digital world. Because we want to perfect digital handling. In this case, the old days, you got about to walk down the bar. Imagine you could do that today and make eye contact with every student and ask them, how's it going? Well, Poppy does let you do that with the Pulse tool, uh, whether it's a, a fine group of students or whether it's all students. Other questions? How many instructors do we have in the room? And advisors? Okay. So at the instructor level, I'll, I'll just conclude with, with this. You're really getting the ability to monitor your students on a day-by-day -day basis, whether it be with this reporting or with the instantly corrected tests. Because let's say I assigned 20 pages last night and the students come to class. Did everyone made the assignment, and what do we see? Okay. Instead, Copley's tool gives you the ability to push right to your smartphone or any device the questions on last night's homework. So you would get a report before you even start a class who's taken the test, who hasn't, how they scored individually, and just as importantly, how they scored per question. So you know before you even begin your lesson for the day what areas, what concepts they grasped by. Yeah, I'm That's right, you're right. Sure. and which one you were really challenged because I'm about 37% of it. All of these same user friendly interfaces right within the campus environment. So I know you had a lot of choices today in terms of um, sessions to come to. We thank you very much for coming, and uh, we hope to talk with all.